and welcome back to this week's Facts Friday. And today we turn our attention to our commercial property team. And you'll see that I'm joined by Associates Catherine Morgan. Catherine, before we get into things, do you just want to briefly introduce yourself and your role within Bracers? Thanks, Michael. So I'm an associate in our commercial property team. And the team covers all areas of commercial property work, but I in particular have an interest in development, development finance and landlord and tenant work. Excellent, which brings me on nicely to our first question for you today, Catherine, which is, can you tell me what the current hot topics are in the commercial property market at the moment? So the hot topic, which has been the case since lockdown began last year, is that the government introduced a stay on forfeiture proceedings in commercial leases for non-payment of rent by tenants, which basically means the landlord cannot recover possession of the property where the tenant has not paid its rent. Rent wasn't defined, so this actually covers all other payments due under the lease, such as the service charge, insurance rent, and anything else that's been specifically agreed. Lockdown, it's been up and down, as everyone knows. So the government has extended the moratorium on forfeiture proceedings until the end of March. Um, It's important, particularly for tenants, to note that if they have agreed a rent suspension or cessor with the landlord, it doesn't stop the rent being payable. So once the moratorium ends, which could be the end of March or later, if the government decides to extend it, the landlord can then take forfeiture proceedings if you're not if a tenant's not up to date with their payments. Over the last year, we have seen as a team multiple requests from both landlords and tenants seeking advice on either rent waivers or rent suspensions, and for us to put the necessary legal documents in place. Fantastic. And our second question for you today, Catherine, is what do you see happening once we start coming out of lockdown and looking forward into the future? I think the pandemic and the new legislation, it's encouraged landlords and tenants to open a dialogue and be more flexible in working out new arrangements for tenancies. Um, I think that's a good thing. I think, unfortunately, the decline in the high street may continue. It It's been accelerated by the pandemic, but it was already happening before then. And I think more people will permanently continue to work from home or partly work from home and partly from the office on a regular basis. This will inevitably have an effect on the demand for office space. I think also we will probably move away from the traditional lease, i.e. five to ten years a break up was only rent review because the parties are going to want more flexible arrangements. An example of that is that we're seeing more and more heads of terms where the parties have agreed turnover rents. This basically means the tenant usually pays a basic rent, but where profits are good, the landlord benefits from that profit and there's an uplift in the rent. There could even be temporary tenancy agreements where people want to hire desk space rather than take long-term leases of offices. I think ultimately, people are still going to need places to live and spaces to work in, whatever those spaces are. So there's going to be a lot of new opportunities in the real estate market, which I think is quite exciting. Excellent. On to our third and final question for you today, Catherine. So we've spoken about the Coronavirus Act, but will it become redundant if eventually this pandemic is over? The government later on in 2020 published a code of practice, which was a a type of policy for best practice between commercial landlords and their tenants. Um, It's kind of in harmony with the Coronavirus Act, which legally stopped forfeiture proceedings. Unlike the Act, the code is voluntary, so landlords don't have to follow it. It basically recognises that everyone's impacted by the pandemic and that businesses need to operate reasonably and responsibly. For those in the real estate world, they will be aware of the code for leasing business premises that has been around for quite some time. This outlines a fair 
and reasonable lease clauses for tenants. But again, this is only voluntary and a large proportion of landlords do not follow the code or the recommended clauses. So we'll have to see that when we do come out of this pandemic, how far landlords continue to be transparent and amicable and, and tenants. But I hope they will, because it can only be a good thing for an amicable relationship because it reduces legal fees and surveyors costs, which is good for both parties. And ultimately, getting deals done keeps the real estate market moving, which is good for all of us. And there is going to be a much longer period of uncertainty, even when restrictions are lifted. Fantastic. Catherine, it's been a pleasure having you on Facts Friday. And Catherine will be back on a future Facts Friday. If anyone has any questions, please do either pop them in the comment section below or get in touch with either myself or Catherine. And next week is a Facts Friday first, where I'll be joined by two guests at the same time. See you soon. Take care.